Thank you for listening to Talking to Our Souls, or to put it another way, to Talking Our Souls. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and may deal with adult topics and adult themes. Hi, everybody. Yes, well, what I'm going to do tonight is um, me and Ava are having a bank holiday. Uh, we're having a bank holiday together. Not actually together, but we've decided not to put out a, a podcast. And then I was chatting to someone this morning and they said, I've got, I've got no podcast for tonight. So then I thought, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit on a wet bank holiday in Redditch and I'm going to talk to everybody for 20 minutes, non-stop, no editing. Just to see if anybody's at all interested in my life. Now, some of you may not know this, but I was a professional magician for many years. Had my own cable TV show in Germany and met lots of lots of famous people. I think my biggest claim to fame at that time was I was introduced uh, by Plastic Bertrand. Uh, welcomed me to stage in front of many of the, I think it was... Oh, I think it was the Albanian royal family at the time. So long ago, and ketamine will will do things to you to make you forget. So so, and and then of course there was the big scandal. If if you don't know about the scandal, then uh, I do think you should read the book. The book actually is being written by my very good friend Jenny, um, and so <laughs> it would be nice, uh, I think maybe for twenty minutes to talk about Jenny. Uh, because she is writing the book, uh, Warts and All Exposure. I think it, it was since I won Celebrity Caravan Club uh, that the interest peaked then, uh, and it was like my, my, my second coming, and that's quite appropriate at this time of year, because it is, of course, Easter. And I hope you've had a lovely Easter. It's all bollocks, I'm going to be honest with you. It is. It's bollocks because, 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 because of my obsession with the Wizard of Oz. It's all bollocks because there's no set date for Easter, right? So if Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ was, a, 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 an immigrant. So that's, that's, that's no, I just heard a big noise and I wonder what it was. Uh, if, if, you, if you can hear it on your hair, earphones, then uh, well, congrats. So yeah, no, Jesus Christ, right? Died for our sins, our sins, are, are, on on um, Good Friday. He was nailed to that cross by the bloody Romans. Um, or was it the Corinthians? I, I don't know. So anyway, they're, they're very good roads and sewerage, which is something this country doesn't know what to do apart from chuck it in the sea. So, there we go. Uh, what happened was... <laughs> that's another colleague coming back. Um... Yeah, he died for our sins on on on, on Good Friday, uh, and then he rose like Lazarus uh, on 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 Easter Sunday, which was yesterday. So the thing is, if you look at your calendar, there is no set day. For, it's it's all to do with the moon. You have to have forty days of fasting. What's all that about? It's not even fasting, is it? You just you know, well, do people? I know, I know, a lot of the other. Uh, religions do but I think we take it very very I say we I, I you know I'm an atheist thank god I, I have no religious belief whatsoever however if I was to die and go to the pearly gates and god is there in his white robes and his big long beard and his white face because his son obviously didn't have one um <laughs> he says you've said some horrible things about me in the past young man you know, do you, do you repent or, 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 or what's he going to do? Send me to hell? I don't know if that's a thing anyway. So anyway, I'd just say, wow, I didn't believe, but obviously you're here now with your big white beard and your staff. And uh, yeah, I am so sorry. I do believe, I do believe. But, you know, to me, it's like ghosts and animal porn. However, I have changed my opinion on one of those since I got older. So, um, yes, where should we start? Jenny? Should we start with Jenny? Jenny, I was working uh, at the Palace Theatre in Redditch. Oh, I'm going to say it was 80, 82. 
it could have been it could have been a different time i can't remember exactly it was around the 80s and um see a lot of noise going on and i thought i was in a quiet place uh it was back in the 80s and jenny had come moved to reddit with her husband and her, her, her little girl keisha who is so such a lovely woman these days um and i was working as who was i i think i was playing the dame in babes in the wood yes i was i was playing the dame in in babes in the wood and uh, at the palace theater in redditch and um jenny had got a job as a stage manager for the pantomime and the pantomime really went on for uh three or four weeks and it opened middle of november and, and we started rehearsing in september so it must have been just after my birthday or before my birthday that we started rehearsing and and um jenny was stage manager she'd always be at every rehearsal taking notes she was very thorough she'd just done an english degree i think come back from a kibbutz married her husband moved to redditch had a baby yeah so I didn't know her at all, really. I was going out with uh, one of the dancers, Jane. Oh my goodness, she had legs, legs up to heaven, as they used to say. It was the eighties, right? And um, so, I mean, it wasn't anything serious. It was, it was more like a contract, really. You, you sort of find that when you work in the theatre, that you get so close to people that it's, it's quite nice just to set up a relationship at the beginning uh, uh, of a tour, and then you know, say goodbye, hey ho, it was fun. Uh, at the end of the tour, because you're always working so intensely together. So that's that's what me and Jane were doing, really. It was we were just bonking our way through Christmas. To be, there was no, there was no, there was no mental connection whatsoever. But very nice, thank you. So yeah, I was going. Jane was very jealous. Jane was very jealous. But Jenny and I, for some reason, we, we hit it off quite quite early on. Quite early on, and we—I think it was. Oh, I remember. Yeah, we, we, there was a there was a mid rehearsal party at the director's house, and uh, we were all there. I think Jane got so so drunk that that she had to go home, and and and, and we were we were sleeping in and out of each other's rooms. Really, I had a I had a place at the YMCA. It is an interesting fact: YMCA, Young Man's Christian Association. <laughs> Uh, the young man means up to 35, your old man after 35, for those of you who do not know. So there, there, there we were at this party. Jenny had gone, no, Jenny was with me. I was, Jane had gone home and I, we, me and Jenny were, were in one of the rooms. Nothing was going on, uh, but it was getting late and we were just drinking. I think, <laughs> I think I bought some bottles of diamond white and, and, Jenny, always refined, had brought a couple of bottles of red, which at that time was like one pound. So, um, and they used to say 20% of that is tax, you know. So there we go. We were just chatting away. That was it. We were just talking about things. I was finding out stuff about her. She was finding out stuff. About, and I was, I was, I was practicing the magic. So I was doing a lot of magic, uh, amateur magic, but I wasn't doing it professionally. And, um, <laughs> we, I think I may have brought some cards and I, I'd, I'd impressed her with, with, with some of my slights and that is a magi magicianal, magicianal? That's a magician's term, my slights. So there we were, chatting away until about 4am, I think it was. Uh, the sun came up quite early in, in, in September because the clocks hadn't gone backwards. So, yeah, it was probably 4 a.m. And, 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 and just the beginnings of dawn, as it were. Uh, and she was a very nice girl, but that was another story. So yeah, I said to her, do you want me to walk you back? Because she didn't live too far. And then I, I could have either come back to the party. Because, you know, I've also always been a gentleman. I'm sorry, I know people don't believe that, considering my sexual escapades. But I, I don't like people being left on their own. And especially in, in a new situation. She hadn't met many of the cast before. So I, I decided to walk her home. And we were walking back through Callow Hill in Redditch, I think it was. And suddenly and without any 
warning. Um, she just sort of, she gave me a hug and a squeeze. And it wasn't like, I don't, I don't, we might have even kissed. Good night. Do you know what I mean? Not nothing, but it was on the lips and it, 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 it there was a spark, definitely a spark. And then she went, she went off to bed. Now, I don't think anything else happened like that until after the pantomime. Because that was, that was the thing. I, because <laughs> Jane was furious that night, fu that next day, because she actually hadn't gone back to her house. She, because she got a key. She, when I got back, she was in my bed. In my bed, that sounds very sort of, you know what I mean? It was the bed I used to sleep in. I didn't own, I did own it. I paid money for it from the catalogue. It was a sofa bed. Um, but she she was in the flat, uh, in the bed. Saying my bed sounds like, like, like she's my property and I'm never, I'm not a big fan of that sort of malarkey. So there she was in the bed and she was said, what are you doing this back at this late? And I said, oh, I walked Jenny home. Jenny, why did you walk Jenny home? I said, because she was on the uh, on her own and knew. So that was all a bit, uh, a bit bizarre. So I, I know, oh, it was cr Christmas, Christmas. Christmas Eve, we did do a show on Christmas Eve, I think. And then we did a show on Boxing Day and, and I, Went to see my family at Christmas. That was it. And I was so, so drunk that somebody had to come and pick me up on Boxing Day. And I got to the theatre so hung over. I, I can't believe how, uh, how I managed to do the show that day. But oh, that's it. I did the show. And at one point, I have to walk off stage in, into the into a into a blackout, and and Jenny Jenny was always there with the props table because she had to give props to people. And I remember walking out and seeing Jenny. I gave her a squeeze, and I, I we we kissed. I say I want to say I kissed her, and she'll say she kissed me. But whatever it was, we kissed, and uh, hilariously. <laughs> She, she, she fell into the, or it could have been me, one of us, one of us fell into the props table and made an almighty clatter, uh, as a live show was going on. It was Boxing Day. What are you going to do about it? So we kissed there. I remember that. But I don't think we, we didn't talk about stuff. We talked, but we didn't talk about that because she was, she was married at the time. Uh, they were going through, they were going through, through difficulties. Uh, I, I, I get that. And, but, but Jane was always in the background and, and, and she would never take her eyes off me. So it was very difficult to, to get moments together. And I remember sitting on the stairs in, at the, at the bar at the Palace Theatre chatting to Jenny. And she brought me this beautiful jumper for Christmas. This beautiful, because we'd gone shopping. That was it. I'd taken her into Birmingham uh, to show her <laughs> the sights of Birmingham. And I took her around Oasis, which was a, an amazing, I don't know if it's still there in Birmingham, probably not. Uh, and, and, she, and she brought, I, I, I noticed a jumper and I said, I really like that jumper. And, and she, she bloody bought it me for, for Christmas. God bless her. So that was lovely that uh, that was, but it's, it, 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 but that's when I first met Jenny at the pantomime. But but Jane, Jane and I, we didn't finish. Oh, 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 we didn't finish on the best of terms. I remember on the last night, just as I was going on, was I the sheriff of Nottingham? I, I apologise. I wasn't the dame. I was I was the sheriff of of Nottingham. Babes in the wood. Of course I was. Uh, and so I was waiting to go on. Uh, it's a long time ago. Do you know what I mean? 40 years. So I was waiting to go on the last night. And people do lots of pranks on the last night, which is fun. I don't think it happens so much these days. You can get away with, with subtle 
pranks, I think. I remember once doing a uh, Ugly Sisters uh, with my mate John, and uh, it was at Stafford Gate House. And uh, there was one scene where we had to make a lot of noise, like we were coming downstairs and said, oh, were those two great oaks making such a noise coming downstairs or something like that was, was the line. And uh, so we planned this, that we just did one big jump rather than lots of steps, uh, which, which actually corpsed people on stage, which is, you know, it was fun. So this, so, so remi remember that, that people do play pranks uh, at the end of pantomimes uh, on members of the cast. Uh, the subtler, the better, I feel, but sometimes not so subtle can work. Um... I remember, <laughs> I remember doing one show, the last scene, uh, as a dame in just a petticoat rather than the big dress. Uh, I got I got a right bollocking for that, I'll be honest with you. But hey ho, it's Christmas. So, just before I was coming on for my first scene of the night, first scene, I hadn't spoken to Jane all day. I think I think she, I think we had she'd realised that it was over. Or I told her it was over. But it was over. It was definitely over. And uh, I was just about to walk on stage to say my first line. And Jane is waiting in the wings when, I, when I'm there. And I thought, she never wakes in the wings. She's a dancer. She, 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 does the, she, does, she does a dance. Then she goes off to do a quick change. So I wondered why she was there anyway. And she's looking at me, and just before I say my line, well, I can't remember what the line was. Uh, is this Robin Hood's campfire? It could have been. Why don't you sit on it and find out? Said a wise child once. Uh, just as I was about to come on, she comes up to me and she goes, congratulations, you're going to be a father. And I'm on stage. Now that, that actually made me laugh because I thought it was a prank. So I'm going on and then I'm I'm doing my scene and in my head I'm thinking, what, what she looks so serious. And was she pregnant? Or, or was, she, was she just doing it to wind me up? So I didn't want to ruin the last night for people. So I said to her, I think it was the only thing I said to her that night. At the end, I, I, I found her out. And I said, we need to talk. I'll meet you tomorrow at this cafe in Bromsgrove. Why? It was a cafe in Bromsgrove. I have no idea. But that's what we agreed to do. And and I went to meet her. And I thought, well, I'll call her bluff. Because she could have been. I mean, we had had sex. She could have been pregnant. She might not have been. She could have been. So when I say call her bluff, that sounds, you know... In this, in the, in the way of the world we are now, not so good. So I said to her, "Let's meet in Bromsgrove." So we met, and she was there. They used to make great cappuccinos. I remember that. And um, I did say, "Are you sure?" I didn't say, "Is it mine?" Um, and she said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, if you're sure, then whatever you want, I will do." If you want to keep it, I'm quite happy to support you as best I can. I wasn't really working at the time. I wasn't, you know, earning the big books as I used to, as I was going to. I was just, a, you know, I was a young man. In a, in a, I was obviously a young man because I was in the YMCA. So I said, I, you know, I'll support you. Uh, she said, well, let's get married. I said, no, we're not, we're not getting married. I said, I'm happy to support you. Uh, and the child, and I'm quite happy to play a, a major role in that child's life. I said, if that's what you want to do. And she says, well, can't we get married? I said, no, because I don't love you. I don't want to spend much time with you, but I do want to support you. I didn't think I could do anything else, really. So this went round and round, and then, then she said, well, I'll get rid of it. I said, whatever you want to do, I will do. If you want to keep it, I'm quite happy to support you, but I am not going to marry you and I'm not going to have a relationship with you from this point further forward, apart from like father of, of, of the child. And I said, I'm quite happy to look after the child on my own, if that helps you. I said that. 
because I am. I, 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 I would have been a great dad. So, um, and I was quite happy to look after the child on my own. But she, she, she went for the other, the other way. And I'm not sure, looking back on it, that it actually was true. I mean, I'm 180 pounds shy, but you know, if it if it was true, then it's nothing to joke about. B but but if it if it isn't true and it it was a wind up, then 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 evil, evil. But I have no way of knowing either way. That, so so um, I don't want to say that it wasn't true. And, and maybe it makes me feel better if I if I allow myself to think that way. But but if it was true, I did. I do believe I, I said and did the right things. I don't think you know. And I would quite happily looked after that child. But we will never know. So anyway, that was me meeting Jenny way back when when I was at the Palace Theatre in Babes of the Wood as the Sheriff of Nottingham. Now I've been talking for twenty minutes and twenty eight seconds. I don't know if anybody is going to find this interesting. If you do feel that it is interesting, then then you know, send us a comment, send us a like. That's always appreciated. Give us a review. Mainly, give us a review on um, on your on your podcast provider. A review really really helps. If you've enjoyed yourselves, then do share it because me and Av do it every week. 20 minutes of talking about what's going on in the world. Uh, and sometimes I drop in some awful jokes. I think I've only managed to drop in three that I know were awful. So I hope you had a lovely Easter. Me and Av will be back together next week. That sounds like a love story waiting to happen, doesn't it? So, so enjoy the rest of your holidays. Um, subscribe to our podcast. It is Steve Hen at Magic Hen on Twitter. You can find us there. You can find us on, on all the socials. Uh, Steve Hen, Av Singh, talking to our souls. Merry Easter. Bye. So join us again next week when we talk exclusively from our souls. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe and share this because it will help us. And don't forget to tune in next week, 8pm Monday. Ta-ra! Oh, so